this is a sacroiliac pool with the patient supine and the doctor positioned in the cephalad portion. So this technique is possible only if you have a table like this one, which is anti-slippery and that stick to the skin. And what we're going to do, we're going to place the patient in such a way that the sacrum stick to the pelvis, to, to the pelvis cover and we're going to have a sacral pool and that will create a tilt of the pelvis. So please, if you can sit here, <clears throat> you sit right here roughly, and you're going to put your feet over there on this side. Good, and I'm going to prep it. So what I want, I want, and that's a key, I want to have a spans down to just at the level before we get the buns, okay? And I'm going to just gently raise that but I want this section to stick and not this section. So this section is going to slide. And I want him, I don't want him to hurt himself on the thoracic section, so I'm going to have him to slide down more, more, beautiful. And now you're going to lay down like that. Super. Okay, a little bit more, a little, we're too far here. Can you go down a little teeny bit? A little bit, okay, good, stop. So here we have his head in the auto part of the table. So what we can do, raise your head. We're going to, that's it. And that's going to, are you comfortable like that? <clears throat> so that table tilt, the cervical headpiece tilt is great. So I'm going to put both hands like that. Okay, and I'm going to ask him to bend his leg. Can you bend your legs for me? Beautiful. And the purpose of bending the leg is basically to flatten the lumbar, as you know. And it's important to flatten the lumbar because every time you put an axial pull on the spine, there is more tension that will happen at the curvature. So you don't want, if you have your lumbar arch, basically you may hurt the thoracolumbar junction, you don't want that. So the patient position, you have it. Now, the doctor position, I'm going to be cephalad to the patient I'm going to grab his forearm and ask him to grab my forearm too. Beautiful. Then I'm going to gently stretch him to take the slack out. I'm going to ask him to breathe in, breathe out, and I'm going to warn him that I'm going to put the stretch like that. I don't want him to be surprised, okay? Breathe in, breathe out, and that's it. Very good pull, feel the pull, it's a, it's a strong pull. The sacrum base is in close contact with the table and should almost stick to it. It is why the sacrum should not be covered with clothes, but contact directly the table fabric. As the patient's body is pulled cephalad, the hip and knee extend slightly, increasing the tension on the psoas muscle, increasing the lumbar lordosix, tilting the pelvis in extension while the sacrum is tilt in flexion. There is an induced gapping in the posterior part of the sacroiliac joint. The patient weight has a direct incidence on the result. Heavy hip will increase the sacral pressure and make the technique more successful. Very light patient, it will not work as well. So this technique, this approach is to treat the sacroiliac joint in a very simple manner and in the same time affect to a certain degree the hip joint. So it can be interesting in certain type of light uh, coxoarthrosis. So I'm going to position the patient supine. He's going to bring his head over there, if you can lay down. And we're going to have him use those, long, uh, those axillary roll, which are absolutely great for that type of technique. Beautiful. And we're going to ask you to put your hands here and relax well. You're comfortable? Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm going to gently pull that patient to take the slack out, okay? So the leg is straight, and we're going to choose, let's say that we're going to treat the right sacroiliac joint. So we need a few things. First, I need the table to be down at around the level of my knee, so I need the low bench. And <clears throat> I'm going to be codad facing the patient's cephalad. I'm going to hold the patient's leg between my two knees, like that. And I'm, I want to start with my knee bent. Both hands are going to grab the, hell, the thigh to help me in that motion. 
And I'm going to perform a quick pull by extending my knee. And in the same time, I pull for the arm. So it's going to be like that. I just back up a little bit to get the slack. And there you go. So the hip joint, how does it work? The hip joint is anterior in relation to the sacroiliac joint. And it's also a little bit inferior. So if you pull the leg, the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine, is going to be moved anterior and inferior. Furthermore, the leg abduction at 30 degrees line up the sacroiliac joint plane with the vector pull. If the foot is externally rotated, you increase the natural anteversion of the femoral head. And in such a way, you decrease the co-optation of the hip. So the hip joint will be more affected if you have an external foot rotation on the side treated. Now, in opposite, if you internally rotate the foot, you increase the co-optation at the level of the hip joint. So there is less slack, the sacroiliac joint will be more affected.